Rocco, what do you think? All right. So about beauty and function and form and detail and the Monitor Audio Bronze 2s. My first set of Monitor Audios, just like the Klipsch, which these will be directly compared against because these are also about $380. Roughly, they change, everything changes every goddamn day. And with the covers on, it's sort of like cover, wood, eh. But then you start getting into it. You start getting into, oh my god! The owner who let me borrow these has emailed me and said, I had a hard time getting these covers in the box, so if you can't fit them in there, just throw them away, because I'm never going to use them. And holy fuck! Why would you ever? Just so you could do that. Just for intros on reviews. That's what the covers are there for. So you take them off and it's like... <sighs> Can I touch it? I'm going to get to how they look in a bit. Let's talk about how they sound first. Let's get that out of the way. That boring shit about, you know, sound. Up here in the home theater. Honestly, a little underwhelmed. For the size of the driver, it's a six and a half. It is a six and a half inch driver. And... It can get sort of near where the volume I'd like. Actually, probably gets near everyone's happy volume point. But I'm a lunatic. So comparing this directly to the Klipsch again, the RP150M, uh, they're probably real close. Now, there is a 6.5 inch version of the Klipsch, which I haven't heard, but I can go into the assumption that it would be more, more better for theater, home theater sitting. Where the clips really shine is on that desk, though. I talked about that a lot. And where these really shine is on the desk, though. And I'm going to talk about that right now. Because out here in the home theater, there's occasional bursts of, where's that low end coming from? Are my subwoofers off? Because I run everything in direct mode when I'm doing music. Music is indirect. That means just speakers, and then I shut off all the, all the subs. There's five of them there in that view. <coughs> what are you doing? So, can they, are they bassy? Do they throw out enough bass to not need a sub? No. Not for a room this big. This room is 15 by 18, plus a massive opening in the kitchen. So, I was listening to music on them. I was enjoying it. Occasionally a Dead Mouse song would come on, and I'd be like, hmm, yeah, you know, that's almost there. It's real close to being there, but it's not quite there. So, the only speakers still that absolutely do not need a sub are the Vanity 2T1s and the Bucart S 300s. The 200s, the review may come out before this, may come out after it because I filmed it like two weeks ago and it should probably come out first. But those get real damn close to not needing a sub. And these, these kind of get there. This front port, I think, does it. In this particular room, in this particular scenario, having a front port doesn't produce the same amount of low end as a back port where you have the windows and the rest of the room to bounce off of. Blah, 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 blah. Imaging, not as good as the Klipsch. Big Klipsch horns. Ooh. These are gold bronze, I guess. I don't think they're actually made of bronze. I don't think there would be an acoustical benefit to making a bronze tweeter. But I'm assuming that's where the name comes from, is the bronze. And I can see the surround, and it's got this metal grill over it. And there's not much of a waveguide to make wave guide things. Or. And so again, front port, which looks like a butthole because it's got all these little ridges on it. So we're still in sound. We're still in sound. I want to get to how they look in a second. Low end on a desk, which is where I prefer these. All you need. All you need. Because you're right there. It's front ported, so you're right there. If you're concerned about having like uh, something like the Klipsch where it's rear ported or the Vanity T ones where it's got the rear uh, passive radiator. These are front. There's the only speakers that I've reviewed that are front ported are the Fluon Signatures, these, and the Wavecrest HVL ones. So those are the three main speakers that are currently out to do front porting. And it shows. You could put these flat against your wall and they'll just work. Now out here in a big room, you really don't need front porting, honestly. 
it uh, especially if you're going to have this sort of space behind it, it sort of pulls back from, from the potential of the low end. So one point for the clips for this room. And even though, see those clips, that's the thing about those, those clips, and I got to keep going back to them because those are the direct competitor to this, is those ports were so big that it almost was like, ha. Like it wasn't like a, sh a hole, it wasn't that, where it's gonna like shoot air. It was just sort of like a blah behind it. So it worked, it worked against the wall. See, I'm trying to make up my mind right now while recording, what would I recommend to most people? These are the clips and it's real fucking hard. Because we gotta get on to how it looks. The imaging, not as good as the clips, just because the horns do it and there's a the smaller thing and they, uh, but, the highs in these, I would go through a song. And I would hear highs. I'm like, are those too low or are they too much? They're not too much. They were never too much. Just like the clips were never too much. But were they too little? Were the highs reduced? And I think it's just because of the design of the tweeter. And I would shove in this little thing and it's all back here behind metal. They, they've sort of not muffled it but it's not the forefront of these speakers it's trebly highs the forefront of these speakers is holy fuck look at them no poop on things chewbacca sicario by the way just go <laughs> i want to i want to point out that listening to these here with the couch all the way in the back I was like ooh but when I moved the couch forward for movie night when the projector comes down that's when these sort of took so these are a distance rel relative thing if you can get closer to these you want to edge up to them they get better god I want to talk about sound more but it's like all the mid-range is you know fantastic they, they are right as the competitor to the Klipsch. I feel like I would just give the same review I did it for the Klipsch, only these have a little more volume potential because six and a half and not a five and a quarter. A little more, no, actually a little, le a little less trebly, even though it would make sense because Klipsch, but then you gotta come to the looks and these fucking, these are the best looking speaker I've ever reviewed. If I went to an audio show and these were sitting up on some weird stands and someone had a sign that said, you know, $8,000 for the blah, 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 I completely believe it. I would look at this and go, yeah, okay, I, I believe that. But they're not. They're relatively cheap. Now let's look at the actual detail of it. Let's start in the back. So no port, but then look at the, come here. Look at this circular, just with the monitor audio and the serial number and the the flat things with the plugs. And it says oh, and it's it's oh dual binding post. That's great. By the way, they're not very heavy. You would think that they'd be heavy, and the clips are way heavier. Many speakers are way heavier. So don't automatically assume that something is heavy, it's good quality, and don't automatically assume something is lightweight, it's not good quality. Although this feels I guess it feels like half inch MDF somewhere under here. Let's talk about the veneer. The veneer is nice and deep. It's not, you'd have to, you know, you could feel it's not real wood. We're not at that level. We're not at the boot cart level of pricing where they could actually just use real wood. But the, the vinyl veneer is just deep. You could, you could see the grooves in it. You could, you could feel the grooves. They didn't cheap out on the vinyl. And then you come to the face of it and you've got this cuts around, which exactly matches this cuts around. And you got this perfectly centered six and a half with the reversed surround. So the rubber surround that goes around a speaker that goes in and out, which do I have one to show you? No, I don't, not really. It's just reversed because it makes no difference whether it's rolled out or rolled in. It's gonna do the same job of suspending the driver. And then they took the cone and that's just this is just it's a it's a type of plastic and it's perfect 
It's holographic. It's, well, it's why you're probably gonna buy these. Cause look at it, look at them. They look like they're from the fucking future. Now, let's talk about the little details. Up here on this black strip, it says monitor audio, right? Okay, that makes sense. There's monitor audio here. It says monitor audio in faded letters here. Does it say it by the port? Nope, doesn't say it there. And because I'm me and I'm in this living room and I'll explain it again, here's where the tweeters are. It's too high because my stands are very high because my projection screen is where it belongs. So I have to rotate these upside down. So let's rotate it upside down. First of all, it looks exactly the same because you can't, you can barely tell where the tweeter is. And then it came over here and I looked at it and went, it says monitor audio on the bottom. They use the same thing top and bottom. So you could run it upside down and it still says monitor audio up there. It says monitor audio over here upside down, but then you could put the magnetic grills on it and it says, and you can't tell because it works either way. What a great fucking thing. Rare to have a speaker that actually doesn't, there's no feet or legs or anything that says, oh, I'm wearing much like the clips. When you put them upside down, there was a giant block of wood up there. Negative for me, most people, they don't give a damn. Come here, baby. Come here. I don't want to keep getting distracted. So, uh, what? If you're looking for the prettiest speakers made, there are no words. Maybe the white speaker, you like a really contrasty speaker, the red, white, something. But then if you just got wood and then silver and bronze, and this is so, because there's no reason this can't be every speaker. It's just not, it's just this speaker. Could you get them for the home theater? Absolutely fine. Yes, yes, hell yes, yes. Could you get them for your desk? Uh, yeah, yeah, desk will work fine. I had them up here. In fact, when I took those down, I put the signatures back. So it's, <sighs> make your pick, take your pick. You have $400 to send on speakers. Okay, well there's, Three choices, well, four, there's like, there's like seven choices, all right? There's like seven fucking choices. There's the Klipsch or these, which you're basically asking yourself, do you want slightly better imaging and treble or slightly better lower end, low end? Because these are slightly better low end and the Klipsch are slightly better treble and imaging. Or do you want to go something like the HTD level three, which is just a bigger, louder sound? Like, I don't feel like I could push these as much as other six and a halves. But again, that's me. I'm I'm broken at this point in my career. This is now my career, and I'm just broken. Where it's like, hmm, my ears aren't bleeding. These don't get loud enough. So you got those. You've got the for a hundred dollars more. You can look at the Elac Unifies, which still don't get loud. But oh my fuck, God, the imaging and vocal clarity because of the three-way design. But then you could also go backwards a little bit and get the Elac B6 which will definitely get loud and has nearly as good an imaging as, as these, but it isn't as pretty. So it's, uh, it's just so many choices. And then of course, if you get the JBL LSR, uh, no, I'm sorry, the JBL Studio 530s, well, those only have a five and a quarter again and they're for a living room. They're like, they're like you need a small room and they're better for music. Fuck, All right? Speakers are getting confusing now. It's gonna get to the point where I'm just like, yeah, he's all right, yeah, he's all right. I can't grade them. I don't grade things because that's, that's, it's like grade the cat. Oh, she's a 6.3 out of 10. And then you have to explain that anyway. So you might as well just go with explanations and let people figure out their own denomination. That just looks like a butthole. That's my only complaint is that's a butthole. They're great speakers. I would like to try other monitor audios now. They make this room look more expensive than it is. 
Chewbacca stop eating the dead leaves. And everyone here should go watch Sicario and The Arrival. Not all Pink Floyd is recorded well, remember that. Here you go. Sounds perfect. It sounds perfect, but... Does it sound as perfect as the Klipsch? Sound demo. Description. <laughs>